Mr. Spielberg, how are you, sir? Hi, how are you? I know you. It's, it's uh, so great to see you. Uh, this is like, great I think- Great to our see step. you again. Yeah, it's an honor. Um, Kevin McCarthy from Washington, D.C. This movie is a masterpiece. It's one of the best films you've made in your career. Kaminsky's Wonder in the beginning as we introduced New York as a character was absolutely beautiful in the 35 millimeter. Everything was just incredible. You immersed me so much in the world that I forgot the fate of the characters and willed it in my, my, in my, in my heart that maybe they won't fight. That's kind of how immersed I was. Um, and I wanted to ask you about a shot that I wanted to ask you about since the trailers where okay. you're overhead and you have the jets and the sharks and the shadows are approaching each other. I wanted to ask about what you and Kaminsky talked about, about getting that shot and how you designed it. It is one of the best shots in your career next to the Dolly Zoom in uh, Jaws. Oh, well, thank you. God, that's a great compliment. I really appreciate that. Um, no, I, I, designed, I designed the shot uh, I, on my storyboards when I was just sketching uh, at the beginning of the entire process, I was sketching all of the scenes. Most, mostly it comes from storyboards. But I had an idea for that shot. The shot wasn't just about uh, the fact that we're way overhead looking straight down. But the idea was that when the shadows approach each other, in shadow, you don't know who's a shark. You don't know who's a jet. In a shadow, you don't know who is Puerto Rican and who has brown or, dark or black skin. And you don't know who has lighter skin. You don't know this in the shadows. The shadows are exactly alike. It's only when you see the bodies moving into position and stopping that you can tell the sharks from the jets. So for one small moment, there was equanimity, there was mm -hmm. balance, and there was possibilities for peace just with those shadows. And after that, it all fell apart. It's honestly one of the greatest shots I've ever seen. And, it, and even seeing it on the big screen was incredible. I, I know you uh, listened to the musical when you were 10. And I yeah. have to imagine your mind at that time. I mean, I know that like you're, 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 you're a filmmaker now, you've been working for years, but like your mind at that time must have still been imagining visually what this may have looked like. And I wonder like, do you think any of those visualizations that you had then made it into your movie, the way you thought it would play out? Or did, you, did your 10 year old self come back and go, that's what I thought when I heard it the first time. <laughs> oh my God, I would be, I, I would be a mind reader if I could read my own ten-year-old mind <laughs> and even remember what I was thinking at ten. I'm, I'm sure, I, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to remember what I'm thinking at ten. But I also believe that we carry everything with us in our subconscious, and it comes out in our dreams at night, and it comes out in our behavior in the daytime, and it comes out in our language skills or lack thereof. And it comes out in our art and it comes out in what we do, how we express ourselves in relationship, in, in, in artistic expression. So I'm sure that that original impression I got from listening to that amazing music of Leonard Bernstein with lyrics by Stephen Sondheim, I, I, I know that it became an insignia hmm. on my heart and it never left me. I don't know quite how I interpreted it. I did get in trouble tell you a quick story my parents got the album for them but they wanted me to listen to it and i listened to it and a week later i had memorized most of the songs and i came to the dinner table one night and we we're all eating dinner my young i have three younger sisters but then i think i only had ann and sue i don't think nancy was around then and i sat down at the dinner table and i started singing my father is a bastard. My mom's an SOB. SOB. My grandpa's always plastered. My grandma pushes tea from Alfred Krupke. <laughs> and my dad suddenly said, you can't say bastard at the dinner table. And my mom said, we never say SOB in this house. Where did you learn these terrible words? And I said, you gave me West Side Story. It's on the record. Come listen. They sing it. And you gave me the record. So I got in trouble, but I also got inspired all at the same time. But the beauty now, I'm sitting there in the theater watching it. I sat through the entire credits because I was so speechless by what I just experienced. And just Kaminsky, every single shot, that moment when they're like getting married, essentially, and that light that's in between their faces. Um, but one of the moments was the, the credits roll. And before we get to the black screen with the credits rolling, scrolling yes. up, for dad. And yes. like... I, chills, absolute chills. And I know you shot the film in 2019. I know he passed, unfortunately, in in 2020 uh, did he ever get to see any of the film like did you ever get to i know it was a nine-year process but i was wondering if he, yeah. if he ever got to see any of it no he didn't get to see any of the film but he certainly was present on the set uh britney my my assistant would bring the ipad out and she'd facetime with my dad back in los angeles and my dad would just watch on his big computer screen 
us be setting up shots and talking to the actors and Brittany would walk around with the iPad, uh, giving my father uh, insight into the process. Because my dad, before he was sort of, uh, uh, before he succumbed to a wheelchair, my dad always came to my sets to visit. He was on the Jaws set. He was on the Close Encounter set. He flew to Poland to be on the Schindler's List set. So my dad was on the West Side Story set and he loved the 61 film. And he kept saying, gee, Steve, I'm I wonder what you're going to do in making this different than the 61 film. I can't wait to see it. And he must have seen the 61 film 20 times. And he was always curious and he passed before I finished the movie. Uh, and I thought that I, I, I was not able to show my dad the film, although he saw many scenes uh, in, in process as we were shooting. But I really thought that I needed to dedicate this picture to my dad. So he, even though he didn't see the film, he was able to actually be in the film. And that's why his name's at the end of the, at the credits. You're gonna make me start crying. They're wrapping me up. I, I wrote 11 questions questions for you it's always an honor to talk to you um I, I really truly believe that you this is a masterpiece it's one of the best films in your career i, I know your dad I, I don't know your dad personally but i know your dad would have been so proud of the work you did here oh, it's absolutely oh, that makes me feel brilliant. so good hearing that congratulations you. to you and uh, always an honor to talk to you i hope you're staying safe and thank you for making reminding yeah. me why i love going to the movies i really appreciate thank it thank you thank you so much appreciate you we're talking about some of the most incredible immersion I've ever seen in my entire life. Kaminsky's opening one -er as we go into the city. Yes, just yes. And I'll tell you right now, your performances are so brilliant that I got to a point in my immersive uh, audience process that I actually mm -hmm. forgot the ending and I forgot what was going to yeah. happen to the character. Oh, yeah. Wow. I started to will it. I'm like, maybe they won't fight. Maybe this won't happen. And I was because I was so in it. And I think a, the powerful filmmaker like Spielberg can do that. What is a movie that does that for you? A movie that you get so locked in in and you like hope it'll change sometimes or the, the outcome of the characters will be different just because you're so in it. Oh my God. You know, yeah. Man on Fire for me. Really? I know that's, that's a very- <laughs> Tony Scott. Morbid, but yeah. seriously, like that is, that film is it for me. It's one of the greatest films ever. Yeah, so. yeah I hope me, Denzel I'm, doesn't die. I, I I'm always, always rooting Denzel for Denzel. <laughs> I'm in life in too. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it's Inside Lewin Davis, directed by the Coen brothers, yeah. that I always want a different ending for our friend Lewin. Every yeah. single time I watch it and like, it gets to the part where he's singing Fare Thee Well and, and, um, and his friends start joining in and he gets really angry because they're singing uh, Mike's part. Oh. Yeah, it's over for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't do it. My wife and I watched Titanic. Titanic, like maybe maybe they maybe they won't die. Maybe Jack won't maybe they die. Won't die. Definitely <laughs> Titanic. When they re-released it in theaters in 2012, I went and know? saw it in the movies, and I was like, maybe it won't sink this time. I had the same thought watching this yeah. film about all your characters. Um, so one of the things I found interesting, Rachel, I know you played the character on stage in high school. Um, yeah. but one thing I find fascinating about that though is when you play a character on stage and then when you make a movie, it's a completely different process. So you're going through yeah. a different emotional arc because you're doing scenes differently and out of order and things like that. What's something you learned about Maria through the filmmaking process that you didn't know about her when you were on stage? Maybe something that made you, that you kind of like grew to learn about her. Well, you know, she's written so differently for this film. And I think that was my favorite part of the whole process was talking to Tony Kushner about what he thought Maria had become in his own writing process and got pages and pages of backstory for her. And how long has she been in Nueva York? How long has she been taking care of her dad? why does she have to take care of her dad and I knew all of these things going in where you know you play the role on stage and all you really have are these you know past iterations mm -hmm. and at the time it was I was 16 years old it was like a summer theater camp and I had barely any direction whatsoever I was just out there on my own like it was blind leading the blind and so um this this time around there was so much context that I was given and um and and Stephen giving me the note to act with my eyes and also just watching the movie, just the way it was shot, just gives her so much love. She's shot with so much care and so much love in this film. Oh. And, and that that was really, really life-changing for me. Yeah, Kaminsky, the 35 millimeter, that shot of you and Ansel when like you have the light in between your faces. It's just like one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I really found the live singing and the recorded singing, that that, that aspect, that shift was always natural. It's, it was seamless. But when you're yeah. in a live singing moment, you you feel it, like you feel it differently. And I, and I know each of you got to do, well, I believe a song together live. Um, and I wanted yeah. to ask you about the difference between doing it live versus recording it and then having to play it out in the day. 
I think, you know, recording any piece of music in a studio, it's it's a different technique. You know what I mean? You're dealing with microphones. When you're singing on set, that is raw emotion. Mm -hmm. And God bless your vocal cords and you hope that they make a lovely sound. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to capture what you're going to feel in the, moment in the moment when you are recording a song three months in advance of filming it, which, yeah. you know, we were, we were very fortunate that we got to be together and be in ISO booths that were facing each other and, and actually like sing looking into each other's eyes. But at the end of the day, nothing yeah. can beat that you should know better and pushing yeah. you into a table. You like you have to feel it. You have yeah. to feel it. And I think that's the reason that that song ended up being entirely live yeah. in the film. God bless us. Truly. Those were long. Those are two days of shooting. That was, those were very long days. Well, let me tell you, this is an absolute honor. Honor. I feel honored and like genuinely honored to talk to you for a film that is like one of the greatest Spielberg films I've ever seen. And I hope you're both very proud of your work. I mean that very, very seriously. And uh, this movie meant a lot to me. So thank you. It was an honor oh, to talk to you. Thank you, Kevin. You. Thank you for your time, Kevin. Thank hope you. Hope you're staying safe. Bye. Thank you, too. That, that wonder at the beginning that Kaminsky does as we dive into the world is just so incredible. Um, and one of the things, that I, there's a shot in this movie that I have to ask you each about, and it's this brilliant shot where it's above the, the rumble and we see the shadows of the sharks and the jets coming towards each other. And it's my favorite shot I've probably seen in years and I wanted to ask you what you remember about that particular shot in general how it was like lit like how you got the shadows to be the way they were <laughs> what do you remember about that scene it was so cool I remember after we shot it Steven said everyone come here look 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 because yeah. then like we all ran to the monitor and we watched the shot yeah. and he was like isn't it great and we we're <laughs> yeah. like ecstatic man yeah yeah I think it's it's crazy because I didn't even I didn't even know that shot existed. Yeah, they're just know? working. They're just working, <laughs> they're, you know. Like, Everyone's just kind of yeah. doing their thing. And they're like, "All right, action, just do your thing." And I have no idea where, where this camera is at. I don't know if it's up above me, if it's like that way looking through the fence. I just had no idea what was going on. So, when I got to see the playback and when I got to see what they were doing, I was just completely blown away because I not what, not I, what I was expecting. <laughs> no. yeah. So those yeah. shadows are real. That's not like a CG thing. They, they, he actually captured yeah. that from that. That's yeah. so all real. unbelievable to me. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things I love about this movie and what Spielberg does as a filmmaker is there's a there's a level of immersion that you you reach as an audience member where you almost forget the ending, right? You forget the fate of these characters. Um, and for me, that was what happened. Like in my in my seat, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, I wanna jump in the screen and say, guys, just please don't fight. And then, and then you think about like, you know, the outcome. So for me, I found myself willing it to change. I'm like, maybe maybe it'll be different this time. Maybe they, maybe they, maybe it won't happen. So for each of you, uh, what's a movie like that for you where you get so immersed in it, but every time the movie comes to the ending, you kind of hope maybe something better will happen for the characters and the outcome. I remember the after the first time we had watched it, we were in LA and we got done and then Steven comes in and is like, so what'd you think? And we we're both, I think everyone was like, oh, we have to process. Like, please, <laughs> please don't come process. here right now. I don't, we can't talk to you at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I genuinely, I, I was like, I was like numb. I couldn't speak, yeah. but I did say to him, I was like, you know, this was a, such a joyous experience making the film I forgot it was a tragedy yeah. I like forgot the story that we were telling you know and you're right it is that thing you're like in it and you're so in love with Maria and Tony Rachel and Ansel and <sighs> the very end when they see each other and you're like oh it's it's beautiful the film's yeah, beautiful yeah. David, is there a movie for you that like, like you? I, I always think of like Terminator 2. I'm like, I always hate when yeah. Arnold goes down at the end. I'm like, no, Arnold, don't die. I'm like, yeah. I'm hoping it'll change. I mean, I think a good one is like, maybe Saving Private Ryan when Tom Hanks is shooting his handgun at the tank. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, Tom, come <laughs> on, please get out of there. Just yeah. walk, you can survive this. Yeah, you can um, and it's crazy because I've seen that movie so many times and every time I'm like, maybe he'll survive it this time. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the brilliance of Spielberg like you are so immersed and so in it that you forget <laughs> that you're watching yeah. a movie um one of the things I really appreciated about this movie was the idea that there was more uh there was more Spanish language in this film than there was in the original and the beauty for me as an audience member I don't know Spanish but I was so immersed in it I'm so happy he didn't subtitle it because it was almost as if like 
you were leaning in, you were understanding what people were saying because of the reactions to, uh, to other characters. For each of you, what was that like on set to be able to have that language there? And then for us, not to be subtitled, but be kind of a part of the conversation as an audience member. It's pretty cool how they did it. Yeah, I think, I think the thing with this movie is that it's, I always felt like you're almost peeking through and like, yeah like just taking a look at these lives and taking a look at what is going on and you're not necessarily going to understand everything but you're going to feel what these characters are feeling um so i think i think that's what kind of what i love about it is that it gives the audience the chance for them to feel what they want to feel to think of it what they want to think you you're, you don't have to tell the audience what to think you don't have to tell the audience what to feel let them choose what they want to feel choose what they want to think and i think it's kind of like that with every spielberg movie yeah. where you you're just left to think what you want of it it did yeah. a strange thing for me working on it uh because i you know in the script when we were working it there wasn't uh it wasn't translated for us i don't speak oh. spanish you know, like in the script so you know and for instance uh when we're in the bathroom and we're doing the war council and deciding and he's speaking Spanish there is this uh this I'm left out uh you know like there was this like <laughs> going on there maybe. was this <laughs> like I'm left out feeling of what's the inside joke going on um there but you know there but there, and there's kind of strangely and I hate to admit it an ambivalence too about that from where I was uh you know sitting it, it was an interesting yeah. it was an interesting thing to like you know push and pull and play with it all um yeah. yeah i agree man that to me that was one of the best things in the movie they're wrapping me up i can i congratulate you too i hope you both know uh that this film is a masterpiece kaminsky is a genius the 35 millimeter the music your performances i just just happy to see you guys sitting together and laughing that actually just makes me happy because you, <laughs> you get so immersed in the characters so congratulations yeah. to you and uh, uh seriously this is an honor to speak to you for this film thank you thank Thanks, you man. so much